I'm giving you 10 of the best tips for controller players in Apex Legends, so let's get into it. Tip number one, be mindful of controller looting. Look, you have to be really conscious about how long you're standing still looting a death box. So whether you play controller on PC or you play on console, you must realize any time that we're standing still in Apex and we can't see very well, we're super vulnerable. Therefore, I'm going to recommend you go to your settings and click on menu cursor speed. I put it around the halfway mark or higher. This way, when you are searching through a box, you can scroll up or down faster to grab the loot you need. And since looting death boxes can't really be practiced in any other environment except just in game, I always tell players that I coach to be aware of what they have and what they are currently looking for, game to game. That way when they are looting some death boxes, they're actually trying to just get in and out as quick as possible while still being able to get what they need. Looting and inventory management is actually a skill gap in Apex, and it takes time to build these habits, but the sooner you implement this, the better off you'll be. But on the topic of looting death boxes, we have to talk about tip number two, grabbing quick armor swaps. You may see your favorite player snatch up armor swaps quicker than you can blink, and if they're on mouse and keyboard, chances are they're able to do this much faster while moving around. Unfortunately for us controller players, we have to do this a bit differently. So the first step to learning to get quick armor swaps is remember how far you have to scroll in order to select the armor. So once you get into a loot box, it starts with the weapons up top and then the ammo and then helmet, backpack, knockdown, and then finally the armor. So it's about the fourth row down after you get past the ammo. Now, once you can get familiar with where the armor will be in just about every death box, you can also learn to jump right before you interact with the box. So this way you're not completely standing still, you're incorporating a jump and then you'll be standing still briefly, but if you're able to grab the swap quickly, you'll be in and out. I hit my interact button just a second before I hit the jump button. It's sort of like I'm pressing them at the same time, but I have to start with the interact button. And just to clarify, you can only jump once for every time you get in the death box. This will not be anything like mouse and key looting, but it does add a little bit more variety than just standing still looting the box. Getting the timing down on this tip is a bit tricky, but practice it and you will see how much more effective you will become at armor swapping. Tip number three, learn to reload behind your teammates knockdown shield. Having an interact button that can do several things can often lead to tons of frustrating moments. Pressing X or square to close a door, reload your gun, use a zipline, revive your teammate, on and on and on is a lot for one button. With that said, the biggest tip surrounding this that I want to give you is you want to learn to reload behind cover without running into these issues, at least not as often. This will apply for doors, but more importantly, your teammates knockdown shield if you find yourself having to play that as cover. Now, since you can't reload behind them without trying to revive them first, you want to just shoot all of your bullets so that the gun auto reloads on its own. This will make it so you won't have to actually press X or square to reload. This may seem like a niche tip at first, but it's certainly an advanced tip that will help you out in a lot of stressful scenarios. And if you're on a door trying to reload, what you can do is continue to press yourself up against the door and block it, but turn around so you're not facing the door. This should allow for the interact button to switch from open or close the door to reload your weapon. These two small tips are really, really important as you improve at Apex Legends. Tip number four, you gotta learn how to wall jump, but more importantly, start incorporating it into your gameplay. This advanced move mechanic isn't necessary to learn at the early stages of your Apex career, but as you gather some more playtime, it will become a skill gap that you can implement to add some outplayability against your enemies. So what you're gonna wanna do is slide out a wall at about a 45 degree angle, then you will time a jump, but you gotta be a couple feet back from the wall when jumping. And once the legend is in its jumping motion, turn into the middle of the wall. You have to look towards the wall that you're jumping at. Then press jump again when you're connecting to the wall. Once you hit that second jump off of the wall, you have to turn the opposite way away from the wall. So turn your stick to the opposite side that you were previously looking at to complete the wall jump. This will take some time to learn, but most importantly, focus on your timing, the timing of your slide and both jumps. And when you use your right stick to look in both directions. So it's slide, jump, look towards the wall, jump again, and then look away from the wall. Now the next step is just doing this around the map. Practice it everywhere you think it's possible. And trust me, someday down the line when you're in a fight and you think about wall bouncing, it will just become muscle memory to do it against your opponent. I talk to players all the time who say, I know how to do it, but I never remember to do it in a fight. 
but your key is just practicing it everywhere throughout your matches. Tip number five, if you don't use any paddles and you don't hold your controller in any different way like claw, then I strongly recommend changing crouch from hold to toggle. This will make a huge difference in your gameplay because it will be much easier to incorporate crouching as a whole. Now on the other hand, if you do use paddles, it's probably better to have crouch on hold. Why? Because with a paddle on the back of your controller, it makes it easier to hold and then let go when you utilize crouching. Our hands on the back of the controller make it more natural than on the top of the controller while trying to control many other buttons at the same time. Ultimately, it will come down to preference, but I can tell you this is pretty general, widely applicable advice for both of these factors. Tip number six, a good button layout that most of you should be on is called button puncher. This is one of the best layouts in the game and it will change your crouch button from B or circle to your right stick. This will make it so you punch less in moments of combat that you don't mean to, but it will also make it so much easier to slide jump and utilize any crouching during fights. A lot of bad habits stem from just crouching and not coming back up. This layout makes it so much easier to crouch, come back up, and then repeat the process. Now, once again, this is a preference thing, but if you don't play claw and you hold the controller normally, it will apply to you. And it also applies if you use paddles too. Before I get into the rest of the tips, if you appreciate all of the work that goes into making these types of videos, consider dropping a super thanks. This is YouTube's newest feature where you can tip me and get your comment highlighted below. Be sure to include any questions you may want answered in your comment, and it's by no means necessary. I appreciate any and all of your guys' support. Alright, moving on. Tip number seven. Do not use advanced look control settings. Well, at least for 95% of you watching this. ALC is what most YouTubers tell you to use, saying it's the next best setting, you'll have aimbot, this, that, whatever. But ultimately, it's just not true. Sure, it may work for them, or for a select few of you, but ALC has so many minute variables that will yield drastically different results for each player. ALC fine-tunes so much of your sensitivity that I can confidently say, in my several hundred coaching sessions, 9 out of 10 players on ALC have worse aim than they should on controller. And when I get them to switch off, they always see better results with their aim and accuracy. Now I know ALC can work for some people, but by and far, you don't need them. You can just use the normal sensitivities Apex has to offer and perform extremely well. The sensitivity that I use is 4-4 with a classic response curve. I do understand sensitivity is a preference at the end of the day. What works for me might not work for you, but I wouldn't give you this tip if I didn't have a ton of data to back it up with. Tip number eight, you must increase your field of view. I'm sure most of you have already altered this, but for anyone who hasn't, this setting change is a must. It doesn't matter if you play on PC or console. Apex puts you on 70 field of view originally. This is the lowest setting in field of view, just so you know, and it's borderline criminal that they do this. So go to your video or gameplay settings and up it to at least 100. The highest you can go is 110, which is what I use and what most other high level players use. So play around with it in that range and find what works best for you. But if you are changing this for the first time, it will feel really strange at first, but trust me, in the long haul, it's worth it. You will have way better peripheral vision and therefore you'll be able to spot more opponents much easier. Number nine, master the D-pad. The D-pad is where most players select which heal they wanna be using and when. However, the heal wheel, as I like to call it, is a little wonky. For starters, these days when you drop into a game, Apex gives you two cells, two syringes, a white armor, a white helmet, and a white knockdown shield, right? Well, back in the day you spawned in with nothing, and so for some reason there's a bug with this, because if I spawn in today with an armor and get shot right away, my armor gets hit first, so I need to use shields obviously. However, the heal wheel is naturally left on syringes, so therefore, we must manually remember to swap to shields. This is a muscle memory habit that must be maintained multiple times throughout every game. See, because if you're on the wrong heal without noticing it, and then you go and take damage, when you go to use the D-pad to select which heal or you just press up on it, you need to know what it's on. This is going to get you killed if it's on the wrong heal. Like say it's on a med kit, but you need to be popping a battery. Not knowing what heal you're on and just pressing up on the D-pad to heal can waste precious time when you only have seconds before your enemy pushes you. I always encourage players to make sure it's on shield cells and then once you have shield batteries, leave it on shield batteries. This way you have the heal that can heal you the most and in the quickest time possible, ready to go. And of course, if you take damage and then you realize, hey, this guy's not pushing and I only have one battery, then you obviously have those few extra seconds to switch it back to shield cells and start the slow healing process. Tip number 10, prioritize close range fights. Now it's no surprise to anyone that's on controller, there's obviously aim assist in Apex. 
This means that the game will help us out a little when we're aiming at targets, and I've found that aim assist really shines when you're up close to your opponents. Every great controller player is always trying to close the gap. Not only because it's easier to turn your knocks into eliminations, it's also more manageable to get kills when your target isn't 50 plus meters away. Now obviously what guns you're running will factor into this equation, but by and far it's much easier to handle your aim on controller when your enemies are closer to you. Some may think this is obvious, while others may disagree, but I wouldn't be giving you this tip if it didn't actually work. Take a close look at a lot of the controller players you watch. They are constantly getting the majority of their kills up close to their enemies. I always tell players you can avoid long range fights in Apex, but it's essentially impossible to avoid close range ones. So practice, practice, practice. If you're interested in 15 secret Apex Legends tips, I suggest you check out this video next. Thanks for watching. Peace.